Welcome to another episode of Whitetail Rendezvous, coming to you six days a week as we interview whitetail experts and hear their traditions and personal stories of the hunt. Learn more about the latest gear, discover proven tips, and the latest strategies so you can make your next hunt a success. Now, here's your host, Bruce Hutchin. Welcome to the third segment with Dan Enfelt from The Hunting Beast and the cost of hunting. And it's not about the dollars. Dan, welcome to the show. Hi, Bruce. Thanks for having me. Yeah, we've been chatting it up tonight. We wanted to get these three shows in. And folks, you can listen to all three coming up soon. I'll get them scheduled and let Dan know. And he'll let everybody he knows know. But you had on social media something I thought we'd end the segment of the show's the cost of hunting, and it's not the dollars. What do you mean by that? What that means is, is really um, I put so much into my hunting when I was younger. I put my wife, my kids, everything on the back burner, my job, my career, because uh, it's almost like an addiction. I was so into getting the next big buck and that hunting, that every cent I got, every extra penny I got went into hunting. I actually picked jobs because of being able to get off of work, being able to sneak out early and hunt because I wanted to hunt every day rather than what would put food on the table. I would miss my kids' birthdays. I'd miss Halloween and stuff. And that article was really to make people that are in that mindset now that are me back then really look in the mirror and say, wow, you know, I'm doing that. You know, what is this costing me? You know, because really people look at me, whether I like it or not, as a great hunter because all them bucks I accomplished. But any one of them can have those bucks just like I did if they're willing to pay that price because that's what got me those bucks is what is what I did to my wife, what I did to my kids, you know, and don't take that wrong. They don't have regrets with me or I'm the one with the regrets. I'm the one thinking, you know, I should have did something different back then. So what would you change? That's a tough one because I really don't think I could change because I think those lessons that I learned, I needed to learn because you know, the things I did wrong are what made me the person I am today, which is a better person. I don't think I could go back and change any of that. You know what I mean? But I do think that you should probably take time out to be with your wife a day or two out of the week. Or, you know, you should be trick-or-treating with your kids on Halloween instead of thinking it's peak rut and you need to be hunting. There's some things I would change, but I don't think I'd change the man that had to drive for that hunting. It's kind of, uh, I don't know, you know, part of you wants to go back and not do any of it. And part of you wants to go back and not change a thing. But I think it needs to be exposed for the people that are going through it now. Yeah, it's, as I look at your success in your career, to get to today, you had to do what you did yesterday, and it costs you something. There's no doubt about it. Right. But you're a better man, you're a better husband, you're a better dad today than you possibly ever would have been had you not gone through that journey. That's my sense. Right. And my big point, I just want to show you that it's a little more expensive than you think. Yeah, when you think about, you know, your wife, your partner, and how she had to be willing to just say, okay, you know, we're going to go through this, so today it's going to be different. Did I say that right? Yeah, I think so. You know, my wife's a saint that way. I mean, she's always let me pursue my dreams. I mean, uh, you know, obviously there's been some complaints over the years when it's, you know, you're going to be gone from when you don't have money to pay the rent, but she's always been at my side and always uh, promoted what I do. I think it would have been great if she had that hunting passion. In some regards, too, I think it would have gotten my way back then. You know, now I'd love it. I wish she would hunt with me and be out there enjoying it, too. How about your kids? I think my kids, my daughter never liked hunting. She supports me in my hunting. She loves what I do. She's proud of me. She's a nurse now. She talks to all her patients about me, and she has them all joined in my uh, website. <laughs> but boy, my boys, they both hunted when they were young. And I think I drove them too hard. I think I had my kids when I was young, right out of high school. And those boys, you know, I pushed them like they were little me's. You know, I can remember my son James having them out in the middle of swamps, you know, carrying a big tree stand on his back full of sticks. And we're out there wading the water to his chest. And when he whimpers a little, I tell him to man up. It probably wasn't the best. But that was what I thought was, you know, growing him into a hunter like I was, because that's what I loved when I was his age, is I wanted to go out and do stuff like that. But really, you got to see what your kids want, and if they want to be part of that and stuff, and maybe not take them on the hardcore hunts, <laughs> you know, maybe, maybe take them on the easier ones, you know, until they, you know, start showing uh, want to be on some of that more hard stuff. 
Yeah, I guess my whole thing with my kids, I'd expose them to any as much as I could in life from the mm-hmm. time they get into high school all the way, you know, through their college years and just expose them to it. And if they liked it, they liked it. Like my son, you know, he doesn't like elk hunting, but he loves antelope hunting. Just, you know, loves yeah, James, uh, James loved hunting at first. I mean, and he still does. He'll go hunting every now and then, but I mean, it's a couple of years might go by. But that kid has only shot three deer in his life, and the smallest one's 120 class. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't think there's too many people that have an average buck kill, you know, of 140. <laughs> <laughs> probably not. <laughs> you know, probably not. That's so true. And we're bringing this up for the last segment, folks, is that, you know, Sit down with your wife, have a date night and just map out your hunt. And I did that with my wife and she said, really? Yeah. At least she knew, at least she knew. And I mapped and say, I'm, I'm going to hunt here and hunt there. And this is kind of how it's going to go. And she kind of knew the fall was, you know, that's what it was. I hear from so many of these young guys now that uh, they're struggling in their marriages and they're ending up getting divorced and, and wishing they hadn't pushed it so hard. I was fortunate my wife stood at my side the whole time, but you see a lot of these young guys going through divorces and stuff, and I don't really want to be the driving force that pushes them there, tell them to hunt harder, push harder, and all that, but I kind of do, you know, so I wanted to get this message out there, too, that, yeah, it's, you know, hunt hard when you hunt, but you still got to remember your your family and what they got to go through for you to achieve your goals. Maybe the words balance and communication, and so many times, especially, you know, when we're young, we're just going to go do it and consequences aren't real good. And and everybody, there are consequences for our behavior, good and bad. You wouldn't believe how many private messages I got on Facebook after I posted that article from people telling me uh, how their lives have been strained, their marriages have been strained, and and how they really feel like hunting has become an addiction. It was kind of, it set me back. It kind of shocked me, the response we got to that. But that's the value your voice has, though, because it can put words out there, it resonates with, and then they'll reach out to you, and you're very responsive. And, you know, that's one of your qualities of giving back to the industry, because you want people to grow as people. As hunters, yes, but as people, so when they get to your place, you can look back and say, hey, you know, I pushed it hard, I'm going to keep pushing it hard, but in the end, it all worked out for me, and this is kind of how I did it. So. In a way, that's a huge responsibility on your shoulders. Yeah, yeah, it kind of is. You know, um, I just see myself in, in a lot of these people, you know, that, that probably look up to me in some ways. You know, and, and even now with these articles that I'm putting out of them, you know, going through my old pictures and I'll put a picture up with them and stuff. And you start looking at those pictures and remembering those times. And I see some of these pictures of me with uh, bucks from the 80s, or early 90s. And you got this grimacing, mean, angry look on your face. And you see the pictures now and now I'm smiling, I'm happy. You know what I'm saying? It was was like, even you know, it was a whole different person back then. And, you you know, I was probably a pretty selfish person and that's why I got the goals that I got. So I guess kind of what I was trying to say in that article is, is, you know, don't look up to me like I'm such a great person because of what I did because I'm really not. There's some faults in me too. And by exposing those, maybe, just maybe you can look at yourself and see what's going on, you know? Now, have you ever thought of putting a book with all these different segments that you're writing about now? Yeah, I, I could. I, I put one together uh, a few years back that's still available on Amazon, but that was more of a story based. I think it, maybe at some point I get enough of these going, I'll, I'll do another one. Because this, yeah, it's about hunting, but it's about life. It's about life's journey. Yeah. And it's about well, your it journey. Changed. It changed over time. I mean, my articles, are, you know, you've seen some of my older articles. They're about being a killer. They're about, you know, I've got articles that you look back from 15, 20 years ago, talking about laughing about how I tricked my wife into thinking I was going to get my tool belt to work on something and snuck out the door to go hunting. You know, just exactly what we're talking about. Yeah. Where now I would never do something like that. But, (laughs) you know, it's the changes you go through, you know, it's just, it's crazy. But if you get older, and and I know you know this, you start looking back in your life and and there's a little bit of guilt for some of the things you did. And there's a little bit of a feeling of accomplishment and there's a lot of that mixed emotion where you're really happy with what you've done but there's some things that you're not too proud of anybody that doesn't say that is a liar we all raise our hands and and if you don't and i call it transparency and get rid of your mask you mentioned it before man up and be a man and to say you know i really screwed some things up and i did some things that i really wasn't and i'm talking about myself 
that are really not good things. I was way off the reservation. But if you weigh it all, it helped me become the man I am today and the grandfather I am today that, you know, I just look at my kids and it just blows me away. I look at my grandson graduating and, you know, he was on student counts and blah, 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 you know, all the things that you'd hope your kids would be. And he's it. And that's a reflection of his parents and this reflection of myself and my wife and his other set of grandparents. I mean, and that's what it is. It's a legacy type of thing. And it comes right back to our hunting tradition. What's the hunting tradition going to be for the people listening to the show and for our families? And it's part of life's journey and the hunting tradition and deer camp. We lose some of these conversations where you hear that Uncle Bob really screwed up, but guess what? He's a hell of a guy now and things worked out well. And Grandpa Ray, you know, it wasn't so good for a while, but here he is today surrounded by his grandkids. I mean, yeah. that doesn't happen you know, in a lot of places. You know, what doesn't get said a lot is it's really, I don't know, at least for me, I don't know about you or everybody else, but for me, it's the failures that make me who I am. It's the failure that drives me. If I can't get something done, I will work at it till I do. Dwell on that failure and correct it. And just as I'm getting older, that's what I'm doing is I'm looking at my failures in life and striving to correct that. And that job, my friend, never ends. You know, because we're human beings. Right, right, yeah. Yeah, I think the younger guys, though, I don't think they admit failure as much. I mean, I get a lot of comments back from friends like, you didn't just post that. <laughs> you need to take that down because, you know, you're exposing that to the world. And I'm like, I don't care. Yeah. You know, haters are going to hate, whether you know, no matter what. Yeah. I mean, you read some of the things I wrote. I mean, uh, most people would not put that out there. You know, but haters are going to hate regardless. And I think some things just need to be said. You know, that's why we're doing this series, folks, because <laughs> Dan's on a tear. <laughs> and I want to get him on the podcast to, to share it because, you know, it, yes, it's about hunting, but it's about life's journey. And I've been fortunate to have hunting. Basically, that was my passion, you know, since 1966. And as we talked, it's taken me places. I've met places of people I would never met and shared experiences and campfires that, you know, are priceless. And that helped shape me to be who I am today. Yeah. You know, I always like talking to you, Bruce, because most of the guys that are podcasters and stuff are so young, but I can relate with you because at least we're close in age, closer than uh, all those <laughs> <Yeah>. other people. <laughs> a lot of times we're talking to a 20-year-old guy when I'm on a podcast, you know. Yeah, and there's no way they can get it because they haven't been there yet. Right, right. No, it just wisdom comes from age and sometimes it's extremely painful. But, you know, here I am today and here, you know, we'll have hundreds of thousands of people who will listen to this little series and they'll go, wait a minute, what are these guys talking about? And if we can get people, if Dan and I can get people, just guys and gals, just to think and find, I guess, that, that balance and keep the passion, keep the drive, because you need that to get through life. There's no question about it. But if we can help with the other things, that's a good thing in my book. Yeah. 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 I think we're reaching people. Yeah, I would agree. And you know, I can't wait to fall. We already talked about Bull Week Hole on that public land DIY hunt. My buddy missed him and was one of the class buck. And, you know, at my age, that's what gets me excited because I know different ways I'm going to access the property. I know basically where he is. And my buddy had a shot at him last year, which I was hoping he would get a shot. I didn't want to go in there and kill him. I only hunted one day with him. But he hunted him, and I hope to get in there this year and have the opportunity. But you know, you're a 365 hunter that's been doing this for such a long time, and you're so honed with your skill level that you know, folks, just get on the Hunting Beast and get on Dan's YouTube channel and follow him on Facebook and Instagram. And if you see something you don't like or you disagree with the post, let him know because he's posting what he's thinking. Yeah, I'm pretty open. I mean, people can DM me and stuff, and I answer. I mean, I don't always answer the same day or something. I mean, but I, I do. I look at everything everybody sends me. You know, I get a lot of messages, so sometimes it takes me a while, but I read them all. The good, the bad, and the ugly. Right, right. <laughs> but we put ourselves out there just to do that. I mean, I'm fine right. with it. Well, with that, folks, this is Bruce Hutchin, your host at Whitetail Rendezvous Podcast with Dan Infelt of The Hunting Beast. And Dan, thanks so much for your time this night. And, you know, I'll let you know when all this series is going to come up. It'll be, you know, separate days, but I'll post them three days in a row and we'll go from there. Appreciate it, Bruce. It's always fun talking to you. Always enjoy it. 
Thanks for joining us. Be sure to tune in tomorrow for another episode of Whitetail Rendezvous, where you can listen and learn from the experts so you can be more successful on your next hunt. Until next time, listen, learn, and succeed.